everybody. What was that in The Simpsons? Hi, Dr. Nick. How are we all doing? You've got a different Scottish face to look at at five o'clock on this Wednesday. Who's with me, ladies? Is anyone with me? Is anyone coming live? Give me a wave, please. Or a hashtag live if you're live. Or a hashtag replay if you're getting this on the replay. So, you've got someone different today. Hello, Claire Manning. Hashtag love. Oh my goodness, I like it. Oh, quickly corrected it to hashtag live. Are you sure you don't mean hashtag love live, live love? Okay, hi Claire, I hope you're good today. So as I was saying, our Emma, Mrs McElhenney, the gaffer, usually does this live every Wednesday at five o'clock. But she is on her holidays. So luckily or unluckily for you, you are stuck with me. Sarah, hi, how you doing? I thought you were working, it's good to have you here. So, first thing to say is, oh my goodness, we have got 3,200 members in this group. I actually can't believe how many of you that there are. So, I think there's gonna be loads of names here that don't even know who I am, which is quite poor on my part, to be honest, um, because I haven't been on as much as I really should have. So, here we have a commitment, you're gonna be seeing more of me. Um, I am Clara Innes and I am the head coach here at EMW Nutrition. Um, I've been working with Emma for a oh, year, year and three months, year and two months. Um, yeah, and I coach the majority of our clients over in our VIP group. Um, we, we offer one-to-one -one coaching. Um, my background is in finance and then so I did 13 years in banking. And then after that, I had a few years of working for a breast cancer charity. And now this is all I do. All I do is work with women on their mindset, fitness and nutrition. So that is my bag. That is my area of expertise. And as I'm sure most of the ladies who are on this live right now, or some ladies who aren't seeing it live but catch it on replay, they will attest that we are very, very good at it. So you're in the right place. So today's live is all about goals and controls. And I was a wee bit cheeky in my, my kind of intro message where I was talking about when the cat's away, the mice play. Um, because we do usually save most of our kind of, um, our how coaching um, and our ideas and our, our, our theories of how to get to success. We usually keep that for our, our paid group, but Emma's away, so I am just going to talk about lots of goals that I hear on a regular basis that people don't keep to, that people do not stick to, and I'm going to talk about controls that they could put in place to make that more doable, or reasons that some people don't achieve those goals. So before I get stuck into the kind of minutiae, I've got a list here. Unfortunately, I'm not as organised as Emma, so I don't have like a lovely little worksheet for you all to work through. I have my pretty ugly scribbles here to keep me right. What I've got here is a list of the most common kind of goals or statements that I hear from women on a regular basis. And I'm going to talk about each of them and the questions that as a coach I ask them and the suggestions that I would make to get them closer to where they want to be. But what I'd also love to hear, hello Sandra, hi Heather. What I would also love to hear from your good selves is goals that you make or stories that you tell yourself on a regular basis. Um, and I think some of the things that I'm going to be, some of the things that I'll say here, you've probably told yourself before or you've, you've, you've said it in the past. So if any other ones come up, feel free to pop it in the comments and I will, um, I'll tell you what I think of them and what I think would be a more realistic version of them. So some of them I mentioned in the comments, let's just get started. So the biggie, we've probably all said this, we've probably all heard our mums saying it. The diet starts Monday, usually said in the middle of a weekend before someone shoves an enormous amount of food or alcohol down their throat. 
and uh, there's a few problems that I, as a nutrition coach there's a few problems that I have with this the first is the whole diet starts Monday thing in my mind that that's less of a, a promise to yourself that you're going to make changes on Monday than it is actually granting yourself permission to kind of be gluttonous or make poor choices up until Monday and what when people have this the diet starts Monday attitudes and when they start telling themselves that what you usually find is that they consume so much more between then and Monday than they would have usually so to me the diet starts Monday is less of a, a promise to yourself that you're going to make better choices on Monday than it is as an excuse to yourself to make poor choices up until Monday so does anybody has anyone used this one in the past does this ring a bell with you and do you agree do you think that I'm being quite fair that the diet starts Monday is actually more of an excuse to misbehave up until Monday and then the other thing is why Monday so if you're saying this to yourself on Friday night why would you not start on a Saturday or why would you not start on a Tuesday or a Wednesday and the reason for that is just when you're bringing about change the best way to do it is to make it as easy on yourself as possible it's so well known you know Bob Geldof told us, tell me why I don't like Mondays. Mondays are shit anyway. It's the first day of the week. We're all tired after the weekend. We can't be bothered going to work. Why on earth would you add a complication to a Monday of starting a diet? Because that's just going to make you feel even worse. So get Monday out of the way and either start your diet, and I'll talk about that in a minute, start behaving yourself on the Wednesday or start behaving yourself on the Sunday so that you're therefore not giving yourself permission to have all the cheesy cauliflower bake along with your Sunday roast and all that. And then the last kind of issue I have with this is the word diet. I really dislike the word diet. I think it's quite old school um, and we kind of talk to our clients regularly about please stop thinking of what you're doing as a diet. You're just living well. You're making good choices. So there we have it. That's my kind of deconstruction of the diet starts Monday. And the best control that I could suggest to put in place for this is if you're going to indulge, just indulge. But indulge there and then. Decide you're going to do it. Don't give yourself permission to just overindulge all weekend. And then again, another good control is if you're going to start something new, pick any day but a Monday to start it. So give me a wave, give me a hi if all of that makes sense, please. Sandra, you've said that makes sense to you. Yep. Anyone else still with me? Anyone else still watching? Does anyone have any questions about my ramblings about the diet starts Monday? No? Okay, that's fine. Don't see anything else. So the next one that I hear, well, we probably all hear this one all the time is I need to lose weight and I need to lose weight is a big statement it's a huge big statement but I think we need to be more specific about it don't we so hello Heather makes sense perfect hi Sarah okay that's great you're still with me so people want to lose weight so the questions I always ask and again, Emma's going to kick Mars for giving away the how here. But the questions I always ask are, okay, A, is it all about weight or can it be more about size? And I'm sure Emma talks about this all the time. But there's lots of reasons our weight will go up that we are not in control of. So things like our menstrual cycle, um, things like how much sodium our body's holding on to. So A, it's not all about weight, but B... If you're saying that you want to lose weight, and when I used to be a PT, this was the one thing I heard all the time, it was, I need to lose weight and tone up. Okay, how much weight? Are you looking to lose half a stone or are you looking to lose 10 stone? Because I have worked with women at, oh, hi, Misha! I have worked with women at every end of that spectrum. And the first thing that we need to understand is, how much weight are you looking to lose if that's what's motivating you? And then once we know that, um, if it's if it's a big number, 
then we need to break it down into chunks. Because telling someone who is 25 stone, you know, if someone who's 25 stone says, I need to lose 10 stone, that's massive. And, you know, it's, it's, just, it's a massive task. So there's no way that you're going to wake up and say you wake up and you've lost three pounds for a lot of people. They'd be like, yeah, that's brilliant. But for a lot of people, if they've got so much to lose, they'll be like, no, that's nothing because I've still got so much that I need to lose. So when it comes to losing weight, I always recommend being very clear about how much weight and and what amount of time. So if someone wants to lose half a stone, yeah, you could probably do that over a couple of weeks if you really, really buckle down. Um, or if it's if it's big numbers, how do you break it down into smaller chunks so that it feels more manageable, so that we can celebrate it each time? So let me know if that one's making sense. The control there is knowing the number and knowing the time scale. Okay, this is another one that I hear a lot. I just want to be able to open my wardrobe and everything in it will fit. So I'm often working with women who have in their wardrobe a selection of clothes <laughs> that are a size 10, 12, 14, 16 and sometimes up to 18. So these women have put on weight over years and they haven't cleared out their clothes that are too small for them and they miss being able to just feel good in their clothes. So these women have four to five different sizes of clothes in their wardrobe. Some of the women that I'm speaking to at the moment aren't even wearing kind of proper clothes because it's locked down, isn't it? So we're all in our kind of our home attire. But how can it be possible if you have four or five different sizes of clothes in your wardrobe for you at any one time to open your wardrobe and for it all to fit? So this goal is just about, or this, the control that I would suggest there is if you're a size 18 and you want to fit into the size 10, what you need to understand is that you can't fit into a size 10 without first being a size 16, 14, 12. So again, we just need to make the goals more achievable and understand that these things happen in sequence. So you can't go from 15 stone to 10 stone without first being 14, 13, 12, 11. So to conclude on that one, for the women I'm describing that hoard all their clothes and they don't throw things out when they don't fit anymore, it's never going to be possible for you to fit into everything in your wardrobe because you are never at the same time going to be a size 10, 12, 14, 16. Does that make sense? So just being clear about what success looks like. Okay, Sarah, you've learned losing inches is better than weight because the inches change your physical shape. Can I get an amen up in here? Yes, and it makes me so happy to read you saying that as well. It really, really does. Okay, next one. When I get time, I'm going to change, or I don't have time to change. So this is one, actually, that my husband and I used to talk about a lot. So we both used to work in banking, and we were just knackered all the time, flying up and down to London, working all the hours, partying really hard. And we would tell ourselves these little stories that it was like, oh, well, it's okay for such and such because they're a window cleaner, or it's okay for such and such because they do manual labour, so it's a byproduct of their life that they're keeping fit, but it's not the same for us because we're so busy. We've got these jobs or it's not the same. Later on, it's not the same for us because we've got the kids. The fact is there's always going to be reasons for you not to change and not to do things, but you need to make it, unfortunately. There's literally at every time in your life, in my life right now, so I'm invested in health. It is my lifestyle and I love it. But at any given time in my life, there's always other things that I could be doing, but I make sure that I prioritise. So I suppose that's not much, that's not as much a goal as it is a, a story we tell ourselves. And the, the control there is to ask, ask yourself, am I being honest? Like, do I need to do that ironing right now? Or can I go out and walk 2000 steps and then do the ironing after that? Okay, next one's here. I'm going to eat clean from now on. Now, I hear this one. You've got no idea how often Emma and Helen and myself hear this one. The answer is eating clean. It's eating sustainable. So 
this is the thing, it just all depends on the goal, doesn't it? If the goal is to lose body fat, it needs to be a calorie deficit. And you can eat as clean as you like, everything can be organic, corn-fed, grass-fed, massaged by virgins, but you can still very, very easily burst your calories. So eating clean is fabulous, it's wonderful, but it's not necessarily going to remove fat from your body if you're not also practicing a calorie deficit. So, and yeah, so you, you can eat clean, absolutely, and be in a deficit, but you can eat clean, you can have all the avocado you want, all the lovely lime caught fish, safe this, blah, blah, blah. But if you're in a deficit, and bearing in mind, sorry, if you're not in a deficit, Bearing in mind a lot of the foods associated with clean eating, things like avocado and olive oil, they're really quite high in calories. So it's very, very easy to eat clean, but not be in a calorie deficit. So is the goal there to actually eat clean? In which case, good on you, fabulous and enjoy. But if the goal is actually to reduce body fat, then eating clean isn't the answer. And the control I would suggest that I suggest to everyone is track your calories accurately and make sure you're in a calorie deficit. Okay, so we are nearly there. I've been through quite a few of the examples. Are we all still with me, ladies? Is this um, touching a nerve? Is this making sense? Remember at any point, jump in with any kind of obscure goals that you've ever kind of told yourself that you might want a bit of analysis on or a bit of kind of control added to. Okay, next one, I'm going to combine two together for this next one. So one of them is, I'm going to give up caffeine and only drink water. And I added that today because one of our lovely ladies, was it yourself, Heather, was posting about how much they love coffee. And then another iteration of that is, I'm off alcohol. So these are both versions of all or nothing, aren't they? I'm going to stop caffeine. I'm going to stop alcohol and I think this is just a lot of it's the way we've been brought up everything is all or nothing it's um it's sins food is good or it's bad your weight is up or it's down I love my caffeine but I limit myself to it because it keeps me up at night and I know that I need sleep for my body to be in lovely perfect homeostasis so if I have caffeine after lunchtime it affects my sleep that's not okay for me. I also drink on occasion, but I think the key here is why does it need to be all or nothing? Why do you need to give up caffeine? Can you not just put a control in place where you don't have any after a certain amount of time or you have only a certain amount of coffees or teas a day? And green tea as well, by the way, that's another one. A lot of people think of green tea, like normal green tea, it's just been a normal herbal tea, but it Normal, herbal, normal green tea is actually really quite caffeinated so just be careful of that as well. So it's the same with the alcohol. If you really feel like you're drinking too much or if you feel like what you drink is adding too many calories and isn't getting you to your goals, instead of drinking whatever the hell you want whenever the hell you want to, can you say right I'm not going to have any more than five drinks this weekend or can you say Right, this weekend I had 10 drinks, so next weekend I'm not going to have any more than eight, and then after that it's going to be any more than four. Can you put a control in place to make you feel better, not best? Because when we achieve small goals, it gives us the confidence to go for the next one, to go for the next one, to go for the next one. And then the last one, and again, this isn't actually as much a goal as it is a statement but it's one that Emma and I hear so often from lots of our ladies and it's it's quite a sad one. Nothing ever works for me. Just nothing ever works. And what we would always follow up with is, right, okay, what have you tried? How long did you try it for? Did you commit to that amount of time at the start? Or did you just kind of go into it without much of a plan? What controls did you have in place? Were you tracking food? Were you taking measurements? Is it actually that nothing ever works for you or is it perhaps that you just gave up too easily and didn't have any accountability? And that's pretty much what we are all about here at EMW. We find out, we want to know what makes you tick and then we buy into your goals because we care about them 
and then we help you get there. So you talk to us on a regular basis. If you've done something you're not very happy with, we understand why. We understand if it's a problem, if it needs to be explored further, and we help you. So I am absolutely certain that there's nobody in this group that nothing actually works for. I think they just haven't found the right thing for them. And that might be us, it might be someone else. Um, but yeah, consistency is key in that case. So that is some of the goals and controls that I regularly hear or suggest people put in place. I hope you've found it useful, ladies. That's me finished. So if nobody else has anything to ask or to add, I'm just going to give it another wee second. I'm going to wish you all a lovely evening. I'm finishing up here. I'm going to drive to my mum and dad's to collect the kiddos. It is absolutely miserable here in central Scotland and I mean miserable it's been raining on and off most of the day it'll probably be dark soon so I think just a wee night for jammies early and a bit of Disney or something like that okay I don't see any other comments so I don't think any of you have anything else to add thank you very very much ladies for joining me tonight it's been really really lovely and this is a commitment from me that I will be on this page more often, getting to know you all. And if you've got anything you need to ask or find out more about, just pop it in the comments or drop me a wee DM. You have a lovely evening, everybody. Bye, Claire. Bye, Sarah. Bye, Sandra. Bye, Mishi. Have a nice night. Bye, Heather. Bye, bye, bye.